Let's go back now to New, Jer New Jersey, where Wolf Dinick is standing by with more information for us. Wolf. Thanks. Yeah, well, what we know now is that Manhattan is a little more open than it was. Uh, we told you earlier on that there's been roadblocks, that we can't get into Manhattan, like a lot of the media can't get in, who don't have offices in that square block where these towers collapsed and this incident happened. But the subways are now open, some of the stops, and uh, also a, a train. So we've sent some of our own reporters in, so we should get some uh, files back from them uh, quite soon. But let's recap and go back to what's happened so far. Um, there's a delicate uh, issue with the search and rescue, and that's because of the size of the rubble. When you consider these two twin towers collapsing in such a dense place like uh, New York City, moving all that rubble, and at the same time, within 24 hours, still trying to find victims. And uh, they are still finding victims, as we've heard it throughout the news class, uh, some good news uh, that they're finding firefighters and police officers who have been buried alive. Now, there are also ferries coming over from uh, Manhattan, and just behind me is where the, the victims are coming, and we're seeing ambulances go to and from uh, that location uh, often. The other scene that is very different, obviously, besides this skyline, and if, uh, Junior, you could just uh, show what it looks like here with that gaping hole where the Twin Towers um, uh, should have been. We're also hearing the odd uh, fighter jet just uh, fly over because now there are two U.S. Uh, to uh, U.S. aircraft carriers uh, just off the coast here. So a very different scene than it was uh, just over 24 uh, hours ago, and, that, and that's where we are right now. Wilf, if we can bring you in again, talk about the search and rescue operations. We're now, what, 25 hours after the explosion uh, and the deadline that's involved. Uh, to, the clock is ticking now for search and rescue in hopes of finding more survivors. Yeah, definitely. And as I said, the, the tricky thing is they brought in uh, what the governor of New York is saying, that they have plenty of equipment. Uh, they don't need any more help. They have eight rescue teams. They are from across the United States, including Puerto Rico. There's a team from Connecticut. They have dog sniffer. They have um, sniffing dogs to go uh, look for people that are still alive in the rubble. They have cranes and dump trucks. But, you know, getting through all that tangled uh, concrete and, and wire and uh, being delicate enough to pull that stuff out, clearing paths, and as well going in to find those victims. Uh, it's, it's a critical time and it's a very hairy operation for those involved. Definitely delicate operation. Wilf Denick with the latest. Thanks very much.